Well, it's 7 p.m. here in Ventnor, New Jersey and Bethesda, Maryland, and this is Saturday Night Live with your hosts, Zach and Ray, um, your dear friends from CarEdge.com. How are you tonight, Ooh. Mr. Zach? I am uh, I'm doing pretty good, Pops. How are you doing? You know, I you know for for an old guy, I shaved today. I I changed sheets. I did laundry. I I went to the food store. I'm I'm doing pretty damn. I made I made the guy who sliced my deli meats. I made his day. He was having a a crappy day, and I made his day. So I'm having a good day. Keep it going, pops. Keep it going. You're on a roll. I thought I we would so. spend some time uh, this evening, pops, talking about. The big short. That's what I went with tonight. Banks and car dealers know something that consumers don't. I thought we'd have a bit of a conversation on that front. Let me share the screen and I'll kick it off with this. Give me one second. Go ahead. You know, I, I ordered some big shorts from uh, L.L. Bean for our trip uh, later this year. Uh, I got extra larges. I hope I hope they're big enough. Oh, are you talking about you a do... different big short? <laughs> You you do you, man. Hey, move a little bit to the center of your screen for me. It's my OCD. You are triggered. Ah, oh, you are too good to me. Thank you, Dad. All right, here we go, Dad. Yes. Auto ABS issuance up 60% year to date. And we also got some news just yesterday. Carvana has started selling off their loan portfolio to investors. So for those yes. of you who are not familiar with this aspect of the car business, and I don't blame you if you aren't, this is really in the weeds. When dealers... Uh, fund loans, they are they are typically the indirect lender. They don't actually write the contract. They lend through another bank. Those banks then bundle those loans and they sell them off to other investors. Yes. And we have seen this year a 60% increase year over year in the amount of bundled loans, which are called ABS, asset backed securities, sold in the private or you know in, in public and private markets, in public markets typically. Yes. And so dad, the reason I'm saying this is the big short is because yes. when you start to look at what the delinquency rates are for these loans, the charge-offs on these loans, uh, when you start to look at the portfolios, you see that they're not in great shape and that these banks are finding people to buy up these loans. And it feels like it feels eerily similar to that movie, The Big Short, which was based on some pseudo-true events. Yeah, go ahead. It wasn't based on the extra large shorts that I ordered. Um, so, let, so, so let me ask you a question. When they, when they sell these asset backed securities, yep. um, do they sell them like for 90% of what the actual value is? That whatever how that the, works? There's a spread, right? There's an yes. asking price and there's a bid. And so whatever yes. the, the asking price and the bid is be that with it. That's what they would sell. It's like, it's like transacting another equity, like a stock or, or a, an exchange traded fund or anything like that, that you can buy as an equity. They're selling this bundle of loans as yes. an asset that you can bid on. And what's been interesting, Dad, is Carvana actually just here. I'll share that. Share this tab. Carvana did their first deal since August of last year, and this is actually for their prime loans. So they have a subprime book of business, which is significantly yes. larger than their prime book of business. But they they just sold off three hundred and sixty three million dollars worth of their loans. And when you dig in. This is yeah. part of their forward flow agreement with Ally. When you dig in, Dad, do, 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 rising delinquencies. Carvana rate of prime loans, 31 plus days past due, sat at 1.3% as of December 31st, 2022, up 66 basis points year over year. Net charge-offs wow. ticked up 26 basis points to over half a percent. Still, loss rates remain low despite delinquency rates moving back toward re record highs. We'll see that gap narrow with loss rates starting to move up, especially if used car prices continue to weaken and if the economy enters a recession. Carvana's delinquency and loss rates on more recent securitizations are deteriorating compared with prior deals. Those loans were written when used car prices were high and credit was looser in terms of the way they were extending it. Now we're seeing the repercussions with used car prices coming down from those high levels and looser terms coming back to lead will lead to higher uh, delinquencies. So you have here, Dad, the people holding on to the the the, the actual uh, liability to, for these vehicles for these loans. Yes. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. Maybe I'm making too much out of it, but to me, read between the tea leaves, you can see pretty quickly that these banks don't want to be holding on to these loans. Did I wait? You read the tea leaves? Do you read the tea leaves? Or do you read between the tea leaves? 
well, you might read between the lines, but but you, you, <laughs> you, you are so good at it that you can actually read between the tea leaves, which is a skill set that uh, very few human beings actually have. So that's really rather impressive. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't it next Friday that... Um, Carvana is supposed to review their fourth quarter uh, earnings or lack thereof. Uh, 23rd, quarter. the 23rd. Is that, is that Friday? The 23rd, the 23rd that would be, the 23rd would be Thursday. Thursday, um, yep. Um, I think that that will be uh, a day that everybody should mark on their calendars um, and a day that will really tell us the direction of Carvana because I know their stock has gone up dramatically since, yeah. you know, it, 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 it bottomed out. Um, and, and I just have a sense that I don't know if they lost another half a billion dollars in, in the fourth quarter, like they did in the third quarter in the second quarter in the first quarter, um, that a lot of, of what they're doing really isn't going to matter at that point. Um, but I don't think it's as much a Carvana story as it is just a, an overall lending landscape story because we're we're currently in the midst of another another used car price bubble. I'm going to call it that's that's what it is. Like I I fundamentally don't understand. We looked at the data from Black Book recently, Dad. Mm -hmm. You and I were looking at this over on the Rains Act channel, and you go to the Black Book data, and I'm just going to zoom in for a quick second on that piece of the puzzle, which is. The sales rate. Used car prices actually went up last week at the wholesale auctions. If you look at the Cox data, Cox says wholesale used car prices are up four, almost 5%. 4.1% yep. through the first two weeks of February. How does that work when only 49% of the cars that run actually get sold? Like Every, every piece of information I look at says bubble. Well, the... the I, I I'm I'm guessing since I, I I'm not at the sales, but I'm guessing um, that the cars that are going up in value are the 51 percent of the cars that's, that's or the 49 percent of the cars that's sold are the somewhat decent cars, and anything that's decent is getting overbid, okay, and the rest that aren't selling is pure crap, okay, and so I think that. That would be the anomaly there at the auctions. Dealers are bidding up what they'll pay whatever they have, whatever they feel they have to, in order to buy what they consider to be a nice used car, and they'll underbid on anything that they project to be pure crapola, and the dealers that are refusing to sell the crapola are are just you know holding off hoping against hope that there there's even fewer used cars available and so that even their crap is going to have to sell at a higher price moving forward um so i think that would explain that particular statistic from the auctions um what what it doesn't explain is why why dealers feel so compelled to pay so much, even for the nicer cars, um, if they're assuming that sales rates are going to go up on used cars because of tax season, um, which it traditionally does, except that this will not be your normal tax season because tax refunds will be considerably smaller this year than they have been in years past. So people won't have as much money to be able to put down on these overpriced cars banks are tightening their lending so they're going to want to see either price compression so that the 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 vehicles will fall within lending guidelines or they're going to want to see more cash down from customers you know the cash that the customers don't have because the refund checks are smaller um, so I, I i'm just I'm just thinking this this kind of like all comes to a head when, well, they pay way too much for these cars and then they can't sell them during tax season because the people don't have the money and the interest rates are too damn high. And yeah, and then at that point, you know, it's like this 
giant bubble uh, finally pops to a certain degree and prices will come back down. That's just I mean, you're, my theory. You're, you're sounding like me, Dad, because that's honestly how I think about it as well. You know, if we, if we had to buy a used car and I had the option to wait 90 days, I would wait all 90 days and see where the market is. I know the APR will likely continue to go up, but I think it will be offset by the fact that the value of the vehicle should should drop precipitously right now it really does feel like a bit of a bubble like more more so than the fact that we saw used cars appreciate whatever it was 30 40 50 percent um back in 2021 2022 this feels like a temporary squeeze that's going to push that yes. vehicle values up we're seeing that and obviously this is why we track every single week what's going to happen and this is a great question from patrick let's see i mean when do you guys think the bottom is eventually going to drop summertime maybe I'll, I'll say middle of the summer. I'll say July. I'll say July of this year. I think it's going to come sooner rather than later. Well, you know, last year, um, wholesale values started to decline in June. And, and, and they were just minor declines initially in June and July. And then they, they, um, they jumped up dramatically in the amount of depreciation that we were seeing at the wholesale level at the auctions. Um, and if if my supposition is right that these dealers that are stocking up on cars that they're overpaying for because they think there's going to be a big tax season, um, if if the if things are disappointing and they don't sell those cars and they have an aging policy at the dealership that says after 60 or 90 days, well, you have to unload those cars. If they take them to the wholesale auctions, What's what's 90 days from now, um, March, April, the middle of May, um, yeah. you know, they're, they're going to take some hits if they paid way too much for these vehicles in January and February. Um, now, will it happen? Uh, no, I mean, hell, we're notorious for being wrong yeah. more than for being right. You know, and we get skewered in the comments all the time. <laughs> the difference is, is we're at least putting ourselves out there with what we think might happen. We're not saying it's a guarantee it's going to happen. <laughs> We've never guaranteed I'm, any of this. But I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb, though, Dad. I think what we're seeing right now, it doesn't make sense to me at all this is the most confident i've ever been that you're going to see a high swing up and a high swing down it like fundamentally does not make sense so i'm no guarantees but i'm telling you i this is the most confident i've been in a long time that there's going to be a decline in uh, in used car prices i i mean i just don't see how th that ri rising wholesale prices values um and what the dealers are paying for these cars if they don't sell and my suspicion is they're not going to sell like they thought they were going to sell uh, yeah I, I i think those and and i know everybody says oh you guys always tell everybody wait 60 90 days well you know back in back in no, in october and november when we were telling everybody the best time to buy a damn car is is in in december okay and the end of december you know, so we're not always telling people to wait. You know, we actually tell them when we think is the best time. And lots of people yep. got great deals in December and, and the end of December. And I, I'm just if if you can read between the tea leaves like my son can, um, you can you can start to, to discern that the prices that are being paid probably will not be matched with what the public will be willing to pay for them. And that demand won't be quite as as uh, brisk as the dealers were hoping. That's my take. So if that's actually the case, then, yeah, uh, they're going to have to start lowering prices. They're going to lose money at the auctions or they're going to have to start lowering their retail asking prices. Um, much like that, that video we did about Carvana and that 2012 Acura MDX, you yeah. know, even, even though they've lowered the price, it's still $6,000 more than it should be more than it would be if they were buying it today. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to see, I believe we're going to see price reductions assuming that demand is not as, as robust as what dealers are expecting it to be. 
We should do um, a car or two tonight on the show. Let us know. Maybe even drop a link in the chat of a, of a used car you're thinking about buying. I want to see if we can just get a sense for how inflated prices are right now and figure out. We'll, we'll do one live or two live, like what a fair price is for a used car. Because I see some comments in the chat that you know folks are out there wondering, what should I do? Should I buy right now? So leave leave links or VINs in the chat. And, and RJ's got a really good point, Dad. There are yes. regional differences in buying conditions. Do your research yes. in your area, then expand your searching. This is... So true. So, yes. so true. Absolutely. You know, used electric vehicles and most other vehicles are way more expensive in, say, Southern California than they, than, than they would be, say, in South Carolina. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this can be very regionalized. And, and, and it can even be regionalized within certain states. I, I I just have a sneaky suspicion that in more rural areas of California, prices are not quite as high as they would be in the more heavily populated areas of California, like L.A. and the San Francisco areas, or yeah. even San Diego. So you, you have to take all that into consideration. So there's going to be some parts of the country that will be impacted more than others. Um, and, and we... You know, I hate to say it, but you just have to wait and see. But if you're, if if you're selling, now's a good time to sell your used car. If you're buying, I'm not certain that it is a good time to buy. Let's uh, let's go to the chat here, Dad. A couple of folks left VINs, so let me okay. copy this really quickly if I'm able to. Man, they don't make it easy to copy from this thing. Wait, give me a second, gang. I got to type it down. We got five T F N X four. We're CM zero DX X zero one eight six eight seven one eight six eight seven. Oh man, that was meanwhile, crazy. while you're doing that, you know, we did get greetings from your girlfriend Laura and her friend Natalie, and just yeah, they're just out. A, yeah, just a shout out to Natalie, God bless her if you're in the in the Washington DC area and you have any photographic needs, get in touch with Natalie Estes at Natalie Estes photography. She's, <laughs> she, Hey, I'm doing my best to help her out. She, she's got a great creative eye when it comes to uh, photography and, and she's just a really talented photographer. So a shout out for Natalie Estes photography in the Washington DC area. Well done, Pops. All right, let's take a quick, leak, quick look at that VIN. That I was thought just you said a quick leak, the... and that was... Nope. Um, okay, good. Hey, so if you go to caredge.com, we got a brand new homepage. We're out here doing our best to help everyone. I'm going to click on Browse All Vehicles Near Me, because once I'm there, I can yeah. do a VIN search. Let me plug this VIN in, and I probably didn't copy it down correctly. Damn it. I tried my best. All right, let me let's try one more really quickly here from Shelly. All right, five T D J W five G one five E S zero nine seven three two seven. All right, there we go. Let's try one more here. Great. Okay, so this is holy cow a twenty fourteen. I'm only saying holy cow, uh, Shelly, because it's got so many miles on it. Oh, my in goodness. <laughs> uh, well, can I say one thing uh, just before What's you up, say Bob? anything else with the mile? Uh, th there's there's I think they've got the comma in the wrong place. And I think they have one number too many at the end. Uh, so I think I think it should be like we're going to test this, though, Dad. We're going to oh. test this. We're going to oh test my. it. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is a 2014 Toyota Sequoia, Sequoia with 308,000 miles. Wow. Yeah. And it is a toy, it's a Toyota the dead. Uh 61 days on the market, $14,991 selling yeah. price. They've listed it for the same price recently, although it was a little bit lower earlier on. Hey, one yeah, of the so things for those of you who aren't it. familiar for those of you who aren't familiar with Car Edge, if you want to see what it estimated out the door price is it's right here on the vehicle as well as your monthly payment calculator but what, what, what i'm going to do time, Dad, time out for, time out for one second first of all Please. it's a cash deal only 
There isn't a bank in the world that is going to finance a vehicle with 308,000 miles on it. Okay, so if you want to know why that dealerships had that car for 61 days, because they haven't found the right idiot with enough cash. Dad, okay? Shelly is considering this vehicle. Do not refer to Shelly as an idiot. I'm sorry, Shelly. You are not an idiot. Well, and my dad no, apologizes. Shelly, let me say this. <laughs> if you buy it, you're an idiot. If you're dad, just looking no. at it, you're not. <laughs> Be I'm nice. Sorry. I'm trying to be nice. I there's no way I can let Shelly buy a three hundred and eight thousand mile Toyota Sequoia. Stop it, okay? Somebody has to talk sense into Shelly and looking at that kind of car for fifteen thousand dollars. That's nonsensical. That doesn't no. So I'm sorry, Shelly. You you want to consider it? Consider it. But you ain't buying it. You must not buy it, okay? And if you did, I, I won't say you're an idiot if you were to buy it, but you would be an idiot if you bought it. <laughs> From space here, that Sequoia is $10,000 at auction. Crazy. It shouldn't be. So here's the deal. Space in the yeah. chat. We've got other folks on the team. We've got a whole crew of coaches back at CarEdge.com. So that's why Space is pulling the auction numbers for us here. Let's do another one, Dad. This well, is kind yeah, of fun. What, we haven't but, done this in but, a while. But, but do me yeah. a favor. Put that same VIN into, in, into CarWiser. Uh, Let's put it into Black Book. Let's do Black Book. Well, put, quick, I just want to see we'll get... what I want to see what some we'll... other dealership would, and maybe right, none would see. bid because it's got yeah. I don't. That's the three hundred think... eight thousand miles on it. I don't think any. I mean, here, give give me a second. Um... I'm, and and I'm not going to blow. Everybody thinks you know. I get it's all an act. I don't. I, I don't get that worked up. <laughs> um where was this vehicle let me give me one second this was in minnesota dad do you know do you know a minnesota zip code no come on man why why would i i'm telling you carwiser is not gonna have any offers for this we're gonna run it and there's gonna be nothing um but we'll see we'll see maybe carvana yeah. up in minnesota will want something yeah there you go your vehicle may need a manual appraisal All i'm right, pretty not... sure we could, we could do, let's do the Black Book really quick, though. I'm curious okay. if Black Book, what value they put on this. So we've got yes. that VIN. We have 308,000 miles. <laughs> We're in the great state of Minnesota. Oh, yeah. let me log in really quick. I, I, I bet you it's hardly ever seen any snow or salt in the roads. Or... We've got, yeah. whoops, yeah. that VIN, 30800, Minnesota. I wonder how, wonder how the Carfax is. Reload. All right, we've got that VIN. We've got three of us. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. What the hell's going on here? Try one more time. Maybe it doesn't like uh, the VIN. I'm not sure. Either that, or it doesn't like the miles. Or maybe you didn't pay your black Their book pops? bill. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? One second. Siri's talking to me. How did I do that? I have no idea. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, my goodness gracious. Apparently, we need a new board operator. Uh, <laughs> um, well, any anyhow, uh, I can't imagine that Black Book's going to be a lot. Uh, well, I, you know, I could imagine, but it shouldn't be. Um, and... And it just doesn't make sense to pay a lot for a vehicle with 300,000 miles on it. Even if you say to yourself, oh, you know, a good Toyota, you can get a half a million miles on it. Well, you've already used up 60% of its life. So I don't know about getting to a half a million miles. Zach, are you coming back or what? I mean, oh, my God, he took himself off the thing already. Yeah, Ray said he drives about 300 miles each month. Yeah, it would take me a... a 85 and a half years to get to get to that type of miles. Yes. Yes, indeed. I wonder what my son did so that he no longer has control over the show or audio or anything like that. I'm just just curious, but I guess I'm on my own. So um, 
if perhaps you want a, a, a story from my youth or a, a – oh, look, Zach's back. What'd you do? Dude, that was so weird. Can you can you hear me? What? Yeah, I can hear Can you, you hear me? <laughs> yes. I I accidentally hit Siri, and then these, these like, connected to Siri. So anyway, sorry yeah. about that, guys. I'm back. I'm back. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they were – That they, was very I, weird. I was, I was going to have to start talking about, you know, what I bought to put in my oatmeal. Uh, <laughs> no, no, we don't need to go there yet. We should do some more Vins, though. I think that was quite fun. We had a thoughtful contribution here, Dad. Yes, thank Steven. you, thank Stephen you for B. That, Stephen. Although it does seem like a lot of folks uh, wouldn't be mad if uh, if the one man show went on, but can we do another couple of vins? Let's see if we can help some folks figure out. Show sure, prices. yeah, All right. absolutely. Will Bradford has unsubscribed officially. Will, let me play a sad song. Give me one second so that we can send you off uh, in full effect. One moment, sad song for Will. Bear with me. I don't really have. Is that? Let yeah. everyone in the chat let Will know that we're going to miss him. Yeah. All right. Want to help John out, Pops? Yeah, John Days. Yeah. WBAJA7C50KG912412. There we yes. go. So what is it exactly that we're doing? These people are giving us VINs to cars they're looking to buy or cars that they presently own, and they're curious as to what they're worth. Uh, cars they're looking to buy, cars they're okay. looking to buy. Okay. And we're going to see if we can figure out a fair price for them. Oh, okay. I think that's kind of fun. Sure. Okay, here we go. Because this is, Dad. I watched one of our old streams recently, and this is what we yes. did. We used to do way back in the day. Um, yeah, well, this that's is what we got. That's, that's why I wore this shirt tonight because this was yeah, the shirt exactly. I was wearing in that stream. You told me you you wanted me to go back down memory lane. Um, but I didn't really feel like flying back to Vegas. So here we go. John's looking okay. to buy this BMW. Let's see if we can help him figure out a fair price. It's a 2019 5 Series, 530i okay. four-wheel drive, 33,000 miles. So it's just about to go out of manufacturer bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. Well, it, it, Three months on yeah. the market. Yeah. What were you going to say, Pops? Well, uh, it, depending upon when it was sold, it was a four-year, 50,000-mile warranty. Man, look how much these depreciate. Even with used car prices being crazy, just look at that. Yes. I mean, it was a sixty thousand dollar car, and now it's thirty one six. So or thirty one four. So they've come down on price two grand over the past two months. Okay. Let's plug this into Black Book. How's that sound? Sure. <clears throat> plug right. it in the Try Black this. Book. Um, it's not certified, is it? Uh, let me double check. It should have certified on it if it was certified, but I'll double check. It's at no, a BMW store, but yeah, it's not. It's not, not certified. Okay. So we're in White Plains, New York. Let me get a White Plains, yeah. or that's in New York. Okay, and then it's got it's... thirty-three thousand miles. So let's check. I'm not going to hit the Siri button again by accident. Please do not. All right, so here we go, Dad. Retail value. Black Book has a fair retail value at $30,225. Can you explain to everyone what these Black Book values are, by the way, and how useful they are? Well, um, most, most cars are considered fair. Very few cars are considered like in great condition. Um, so that if, if you have a car like this, which was a 2019 that only has 32,000 miles on it, you would say to yourself, well, that's that's probably somewhere between great and average. OK, so if you were to take great and average, add them together and divide by two, you would come up. It's it's going to come up somewhere around, I'm guessing, 31, five ish or so. So mm -hmm. if you do that, then you're saying to yourself, well, you know what? They're not being unreasonable with what they're asking for. it." OK, now. The fact that it's been on their lot for 90 days would indicate to me that they have a strong desire at this particular point in time to get rid of it. Um, I can't imagine too many BMW stores that, that have an aging policy for their pre-owned cars 
longer than 90 days. So um, this is a car that, that the pre-owned manager probably has been instructed that he needs to either retail right away or he has to get ready to send it to the sale, to the auction. And, and right now, auction values are higher than what they have been, especially if it's a nice car. So they might be thinking, well, we're not going to get hurt too bad if we take it to the auction. So even though we might prefer to find a retail customer for it, if we can't get close to what we're asking, we'll just take it to the sale and, and, and deal with it there. So having said all that, you know, I, I would offer them like a thousand less than, than what they're asking, maybe $1,500 less than what they're asking and see what they say and, and ask them. I, I mean, if you really want to shock your salesperson, say, just out of curiosity, what's a, what's a, the used car aging policy for, for your dealership? Is it a 60-day turn or a 90-day turn? Uh, because this says it's been here like 92 days, so you guys must be getting ready to do something with it. Yeah, I think pulling out the fact that you know how long it's been on the market, and then also if you have the Black Book data in your hand, the yeah. Black Book data, is, is, it literally gives you what the, the private party values, the trade values, and the retail values, and those are all yes. based on the weekly auction data. Yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'm with you, dad. I honestly, I'd, I'd probably get, be a little more aggressive since it's been there for 90 days. I'd probably be doing like $2,500 under asking and, and end up somewhere like where you're saying, but either way, there's wiggle room on that vehicle. That's there the should be. Yes, there yeah. should be. Yes. All right, dad, we've got one here. We've got one uh, from RJ and we also have one from Griff. So let's look at these two next. Give me one second. Okay. Let me jot down a VIN. Let us know in the chat. Uh, what features you want to see as well. So as I'm on Car Edge, if you're looking at this and you're thinking to yourself, wow, it'd be really useful if if, uh, if we built something, did something on here, please tell us. We appreciate it. And, right. and maybe, just maybe in. we'll build it. Just maybe we'll build it. Yeah. I do like the fact that we have the VIN search, Dad. I think the VIN search is very powerful. I don't know a lot of car searches that have a VIN search. Um. Neither do I. No, seriously, I don't think any. Yeah, no, of I was the being yeah. serious. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Dad. A 2022. I wasn't. You're good. Subaru Ascent Onyx top trim level, thirteen thousand yeah. miles. Been on the lot for thirty eight days. Thirty eight thousand three hundred dollar advertised price. I'm going to check that price history. Man, I can't believe Subaru makes so many vehicles that are over forty grand. It's just kind of well, kind of they don't make they don't make a lot. I mean, the the Ascent is one of them, um, yep. you know, and you can get an Outback uh, up to that, but you know, for the most part, you know, when they're in the mid to upper twenties to mid to upper thirties, for the yep. most part, yeah. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Let's plug it into Black Book as well. For used cars, this is exactly what to do. Also, I saw before someone was asking, hey, can we still get access to the email scripts? Yeah. Just click on scripts. All of the email templates, if you're going to reach out to a dealer, are right there. So please avail yourself of that information. But here we go. We're in New Hampshire, Dad. Yeah. We've got 13,000 miles on the thing. I'm going to click on trade in to get to Black Book. And we were in New Hampshire, and I would and I would think in New Hampshire that that uh, that would be a very popular vehicle, being an all wheel drive. Yeah, but they're they're still asking too much money. So here you go, Black Book yeah. saying that the retail price should be about thirty five thousand dollars. Yeah, and they were significantly higher than that. Yeah, well, they're asking for the great retail value. They're asking thirty eight and change. Um, so is there some wiggle room? Yeah, I'm sure there is. Um, I'm, I'm, what if know. this car? What if this car makes it through the spring selling season? What if this car is sitting there in three weeks, and four weeks, and six weeks? You know, can we talk a little bit about that? So, Black Book's saying right now, based off today's auction values, yeah, thirty-five thousand dollar car, and I'm hitting the back button here. Dealers asking for thirty-eight three out the yeah. door. You're gonna be you're gonna be well over forty. Yeah. Do you think that if this car is sitting here? Let's do let's do six weeks, a month and a half from now. If this car yeah. is sitting here at the beginning of April, what do you think you're getting price wise? If it's sitting there, well, you know, if it's if it's a a, a, a normal dealership, um, you know, that has a normal turn policy, aging policy of either sixty or ninety days, you know, they're going to start making price adjustments if they haven't already. 
Um, so, you know, I would think if, if, if they haven't yet, the, the next asking price is going to be 37, probably 37, six, 37, seven, something like that. Um, in a couple of weeks, they might mark it down to 36, nine, um, you know, and, and if, if it's six weeks, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's down closer to, uh, 34, 34, nine, something like that under $35,000 would probably be a price point that would be enough to grab someone's attention and get them to come in and buy it. So you should expect to see if, if it's sitting there, significant savings again, big well, yet, but if, if the used car manager is doing his job, he's looking at, at every one of his vehicles in inventory on a weekly basis and seeing if it's getting any action or any play. Uh, you know, has it been out for a test drive? Have we gotten any phone calls on it? Have there been any internet inquiries on it? And if there isn't, well, that's typically due to the price. So what yep. do you do? You, you know, you, you need to move it along. So you start lowering the price. Um, so a good used car manager is looking at that stuff weekly, if, you know, if not weekly, then at least every 10 days or so, uh, and making making the requisite price adjustments to spur some interest in the vehicle. Um, yeah, exactly. So, so if there hasn't been enough interest in the vehicle, I would think uh, six weeks from now that it'll probably come down $2,500. Twenty eight hundred dollars. It'll be under thirty five. I guess. I guess it would come down thirty five hundred dollars. It would be under thirty five thousand dollars. I would think. Yeah, and we've got some great comments in the chat coming through, folks uh, talking about being able to negotiate up in the New England in the Northeast area. Mm -hmm. Here we go, Dad. A fascinating comment here. Some guy yes. named something. My local dealer let me walk over eighteen dollars last weekend. Oh, well, that you know. Yeah. May I say something? There is no way that should happen. There isn't a dealer in America that should ever let a customer walk over $18. And if the dealer was going to let the customer walk over $18, the salesperson should have reached into his pocket, taken out a $20 bill, handed it to the customer and said, I think we're good now. Let's complete the deal. Okay. So somebody, whether it be the sales manager or the salesperson, um, or even the customer to walk away from a car deal over $18, uh, that, that, that seems kind of silly to me. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Let's go to the chat here, Dad. We've had some contributions come through. We got to address some fat, fat guy, guy in, in the, the kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. We appreciate that. Quote, dude, don't even let your stores go to auction. It's absolutely outrageous. Was a text I got from a rep this week. It's getting crazy out there. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've got dad from Roger saying these VIN check episodes are interesting. Please keep doing them periodically. Yeah, absolutely. I want to get back to doing this more frequently. Excuse me. And from Luis here, dad, thank you for the thank contribution. You, hey, have an Accord 2017 with 90,000 miles. Oh, 11,000 on it. Have gap and want to upgrade to a new newer 11 gen Accord. How will it work or should I wait? Thanks. A lot to unpack here, dad. A lot to unpack. Well, well, uh, right now, his vehicle's worth more today. Um, it, it, it might be worth more tomorrow, uh, the way wholesale values are going. Um, Accords are a very, very popular vehicle. It's got under uh, 100,000 miles on it. Um, so I would think that he should probably find himself uh, in relatively decent position. I mean, if, if a dealer can be asking close to 15 grand for a 308,000 mile Toyota Sequoia, uh, then uh, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't be asking a lot more than that for a 90,000 mile Honda Accord. We've got that an awesome article back on the car edge website. It is our car trade in tactics for success. You explain in, in really good depth here, to treat it as two separate transactions. Okay, so please, please, please go read this guide. And we even include the way to get multiple offers from dealers in your area right here in the page. You need to go read this guide because it explains for, for Luis the importance of approaching this as two separate transactions. The last thing you want to do is just walk into the dealership and they're going to give you some sort of value for your trade-in. They're going to give you some sort of you know monthly payment 
for the card that you're looking to buy. When in reality, two separate transactions, you know what the cash offers are and the book values are for your trade in. That's actually a question I got for the chat here in a second. And you know what a fair out the door price should be for the car you're looking to buy. Obviously, we can help you out with all that. But that's that guide is, is 100% free and a great, great reminder. Quick, quick question. Yes. Quick question, Pops. I want your opinion and I want I want the, the community here with us, their opinion. We currently have black book values in Car Reg. So if you yes. go into cards, you can get black book values. What if we built a page where you could get all the different values in one? You put one VIN in, you put one mile, you know, you put the info in for one car, you get black book, you get KBB, you get NADA. Who else? What else do you want? Kelly, Kelly Blue Book. Well, that's KBB. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Black Book, Kelly, um, Galves. Most people have no idea what Galves is. I, I don't mean, even know what it, yeah, yeah. You know, I I would stick with KBB and and Black Book. What but if I, we had I those three. Yeah, well, huh. how, how would you like to pay that for that? We they, would make they, it part of our. We would make it part of our paid, uh, paid plan. I mean, like we can't, you can't like, do it for free. Yeah, it's not. It's not like KBB is going to give you their values for free. <laughs> no, Blackbook doesn't give us. Their I values know for free. Yeah, NADA. Yeah. Okay, if we could get NADA. Okay, we'll do a little. We'll do a little research. I don't know. I think it's just an interesting idea. I, I think. I, I. I think NADA is. That's primarily the book that is used by the banks to determine uh, loan values, but not wholesale or retail values, more loan values. Um, I think Black Book um, and, and KBB are used more to determine, uh, you know, retail and, and, and wholesale values of vehicles. I, I like Black Book because they have their fingers on the pulse of 95% of all wholesale transactions. Whereas uh, Kelly and, uh, and Cox automotive typically just utilize the information that they get from their Mannheim auctions, which yeah, is about 55% of, of all wholesale vehicles that are sold. Pops, we got a couple comments coming through in the chat. One here being uh, asking us if we can get, the last auction price for vehicles. And so I want to explain something very quickly to the community. We cannot make it self-service for you to get auction values. We really can't. Yeah. It's against the terms of service of all of the different auction value providers. If you sign up, if you're in the market to buy a car, sign up for Car Edge Coach. It's 99 bucks, three-month access. We do offer a money-back guarantee within the first 30 days. And you will, you will have access to all the data. We have like Black Book. We're bringing back um, suggested offer negotiability score next week. You'll get deal school. And importantly, you'll be able to work with our coaches like Ashley and Space and Phil and Jerry and Jennifer. The, the list goes on and on. And they are allowed to pull those values for you. Okay. But we cannot publicly make them self-service. We can't make them accessible. We will get in a lot of trouble if we do that. So can we get you auction bills? Yeah, absolutely we can. The only way we're able to do it is self is uh, you know, when our team pulls that number for you. I like it. You know, it's one way to work around it. Yeah. We answered Luis's question before. Here we go, Dad, from electronics on site. People must Thank learn you. to repair and maintain their car, which is very true, but also there's this like significant part shortage going on. Yeah. So it becomes <laughs> difficult to do that as well. Yes, but people do need to realize that in order for a vehicle to last a good long time, maintenance maintenance is part of the equation. Um, and and maintenance would mean getting your oil changed every 3,500 or 5,000 miles. I know the manufacturer might suggest every 7,500 miles. I know Mini says it's every 15,000 miles. Maybe now they say it's every 12,000. Um, yep. No, don't wait that long. Um, if, if you want it to last a long time, oil and oil changes are a rather inexpensive way to, uh, to promote longer engine life. So, yeah, it's, it's like owning a house. Maintenance has to be done. I mean, you know, 
stuff breaks, stuff wears out. So, yeah, maintain just just know that that's part and parcel of, of vehicle ownership is well maintaining what it is that you own. Another thing that we have, if you are using the Car Edge Car Search, let's say you find a vehicle that you're interested in, scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're going to work on visualizing this and all that fun stuff. It defaults to the depreciation table, but click on maintenance and repair. Mm -hmm. And it'll tell you what the annual costs for maintenance and the likelihood of a major repair is for that particular vehicle. So we're doing our best to, to try and pull all the data together in one place so that you can actually make those informed decisions before you even commit to buying a vehicle. And Pops Florida Man is in the house with us tonight. 300,000 subscribers and 1,200 watching. Yeah, congratulations, Dad. 300,000 subscribers. Pretty wild. Yeah, really that's, wild. That's, that, yeah. That, that's, that's crazy Thank you, stuff. everyone. Yes. Thank you so much. It's, it really is crazy stuff when you think about it, um, that there's that many people that have subscribed to the YouTube channel, although we lost one tonight. Um, <laughs> yeah, Will left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but still, it's it's uh, it's pretty remarkable. Um, the number of people we've impacted, the number of people that find at least a modicum of value in what yeah. it is that, that we try to do. Um, you know, some just like to troll us and that's fine too. Um, yep. the, the, on, the only thing I ask is if you're going to troll us, watch the damn ads. Uh, that's the <laughs> only thing I, that if you want to, if you want to write nasty comments about us, you have to watch the ads that that's just the way this stuff works. You watch the ads, you can write anything nasty you want. And if it's way too <laughs> nasty, I'll, I'll just remove it, but don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> you're funny man you're really really funny <laughs> all right dad let's keep going here through the chat and then uh, pop some more vins folks unless how are you feeling pops i know you had a bit of a headache before tonight show are you feeling okay what? Now? how are you feeling? Uh, who uh, you feeling okay uh, oh you? God, you know i could go probably at least another another 10 15 20 maybe 30 40 minutes whatever you want to do here honey i got i got no plans for tonight it sounds like well natalie and laura are out so you got no plans for tonight <laughs> That is very true. <laughs> yeah, I don't have plans. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. <laughs> yeah, they're doing like a Galentine's thing. It sounds very cute, but I'm not, I wasn't invited. Um, here's the deal. It's a good oh, thing. For those they of you wondering. They, they would have thought yeah. of you as a gal, so how could you be a Galentine? I mean, I mean, hey, it's all yeah. good. All good. Yeah. Um. Oh, put more Vins in the chat. Let's see if we can help more people. And I got to give a huge shout out to Space, um, who is Mario on the team. He's in the chat, literally helping people, giving people auction values right now. So yeah. if we can't get to you tonight, go sign up for Car Edge Coach or go post on the community forum. Please put some more Vins in there. We'll be right back on that front. And we will try and help some folks figure out fair prices to pay for vehicles. Before we do, Dad, Juan yes. wants to know how yes. Dara and her husband, Zach, not me, my sister mm -hmm. Dara and her husband, Zach, how are they liking their CX-5? Have you heard anything from them? Well, you know, I did talk to your sister for about an hour this morning. Um, That's fantastic. Yeah, and one of the one of the first questions I asked is, how, how are you liking your new car? Oh, my gosh, we love it. We absolutely, we just love it. Uh, and and But I'm just so scared every time I drive it. Why is that, honey? You're afraid you're going to put that first scratch or dent in it? Absolutely, <laughs> Dad. Um but but they they love it. Um, they're they as as Dara said. She said I don't know if the quality of the materials on the interior of the Mazda are nicer or higher quality than in the old Subaru, but it has the appearance that they are. Um, and they can't get over how nice the interior is. Well, maybe because it's clean in comparison to that old Subaru. Um, but they are loving it. And suddenly they're driving like me. They've only got about 300 miles on it so far. But but they love it. So thank you for yeah. asking. Yes. It's really, really good to see. Hey, I've got a VIN queued up, but we got to give Vinny uh, a thanks and appreciation. Oh thank gosh. you, Vinny. That Every every dollar that we make on YouTube and in, in these contributions, what is it? YouTube takes fifty percent of the don't. I don't. Know, I forget. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. It goes towards payroll. We've got about twenty people on staff here at Car Edge working to build things, and I'm very excited. We've got some really 
Actually, I got to show you something tonight, Dad, that we worked on. I'll show it to you tonight, brand new. Okay. So thank you. This these contributions, they don't they don't lie in our pockets. They go to make payroll every two weeks. So thank you. Yes. Um, appreciate the content as always, guys. Keep up the good work. Where we're gonna keep building stuff. Keep trying to help level the playing field. Thank you for that, Vinny. It's really incredible, isn't it, Dad? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, it's 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 pretty exciting that at, at least a percentage of people see value and get value out of you know, whether it's one of my rants or whether it's an instructional video or whether it's a blog, whatever it is, what, whatever it is that you're, we keep adding to the website. Um, and, and I know people think, well, there's no cost to do that. Well, there literally is a lot of cost <laughs> and there's really a lot of people behind the scenes, you know, it, it's not just Zach and I, um, you know, Zach and I are, are the face of this nonsense for the the uh, media side of things. But, you know, there's there's an engineering team. There's a marketing team there. There are people there are designers that that y y you can't just you can't just wake up and say, gee, I want this on the website. And then it's there 10 minutes later. It doesn't work like that. And the I, I think you touched on it yesterday or one day during the week where you've renegotiated a contract with a vendor that we do business with. Um, you know, it black book doesn't allow us to have access to their information because they like us. I mean, they do happen to like us and they like what we're trying to do, but they, ain't, they ain't giving us that stuff for free. We have to pay for that. And other things that, that we utilize that we have to pay for. There's a cost yeah. to that stuff. And so it, it's not just us being two talking heads, you know, raking in all this cashola off of, uh, off of YouTube. It's whatever comes in off of YouTube goes to further the growth of the website. So it's, it's really kind of remarkable actually. Let's look at a couple of VINs that came through, Pops. Appreciate you sharing that. We had one come through from a uh, contribution here. Let me pull that up on the screen, and then let's do some work. This was from RA. Yes. Is this a good price for this car? Let's figure out what a fair price is. So I've got that car queued up right here, Dad. I was yes. multitasking. Look We've at you. we got a 2017 you. Toyota yeah. Camry XLE. Yeah. Only 26,000 miles on it, 58 wow. days Very low on miles. the market. Yeah. Twenty one thousand two hundred eighty dollars. First thing I'm looking at is price history. So they've kept the price the same. No real drops uh, on the come price. Come on, come on. They've dropped it one hundred and seven dollars. They've dropped it. Oh, man. And we're in Florida. Yeah. We are in Florida. Yeah. So I'm already um, getting nervous. <clears throat> Why would I be getting nervous, Dad? Because in Florida, you need to get an out the door quote to know what the actual yes. price is. Yeah, because the dock fee is going to be at minimum eight hundred ninety nine dollars. It could be more. Um, yeah, we we uh, we have it here six seventy for four. Um, the reason this is showing up is California is because I currently have my zip code on my account set to California, so it's imagining I'm shipping it to California. But yeah, this is going to be even more in Florida. Yes, absolutely. Let's let's plug this fin over in Blackpick though. Let's take a quick peek. So they want twenty one to eighty twenty six thousand yes. miles. Let's see here, which is low miles for a two thousand seventeen. Very low miles. Definitely. Yeah. Wow. I think we're wow. off a little on price, right? Or what was the what was the previous price? Was it 22 or was it 26? No, it was 21, wasn't it? It was 21. Wait, we got to hit the back button, folks. So 21.9 is the black yeah. book. Oh. Yeah. Pre-purchase inspection offer offer uh, the dock fee, try and negotiate the dock fee off. Run, I take it right. Well, yeah, the the other thing to do, um, is if you actually put the VIN number just in your browser, uh, sometimes you can pull up an even greater history of the vehicle from when other dealers might have had it. So, I, I would copy and paste the VIN, uh, you know, uh. Barry and Sandy are down near Florida, near Naples. I could get them to go check out that car. Oh, and happy happy birthday tomorrow, Sandy! If, if you kids are watching tonight, 
Oh, and here we go. Folks are hitting me. You're pricing an LE, not an XLE. Give me one second. Give me one second, gang. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let me grab the VIN again. All right. Thank you guys for catching that. 26,000 miles. We were in Florida. So that's why that yeah. price looks so good. Here we go. I got to click on trims. There we go. But yeah. still, 23,000. Yeah. I don't know. This is looking like a good price. Now, I did notice one thing in the seller details, and we got to be honest, this is freaking Florida, so none of this is true until you get it out yeah. the door. Price includes a $2,000 finance discount. Must finance uh, the so, Nissan to so what, the, so what that means is if you're not financing it through them, they're going to add $2,000 to the cash price of the vehicle. So the cash price of the vehicle is really $23,280, not $21,280. And what do you do in an instance like that? You get partnered up. Just scroll down the page. Get partnered up with one of our credit union partners. So if I was in Florida... And then refinance through our credit union partner in Florida, all in credit union. Like, yes. it, it, you know, that, that would be the move. The move would be to then refinance because they won't let you finance, you know, well, they, they will force you to finance through them. And they will say things like you can't refinance. You can't pay off. You can't double check your contract, but most times you can make sure there's no prepayment penalty. That'd be how yes. you handle that. So if you yes. know what, if you play your cards right, if you can get an out-the-door price, you negotiate on the dock fee at that Florida dealership at Naples Nissan, and then you finance through them and you refinance a couple weeks later, not a bad deal in today's market. Nope, not at all. Here we go, Dad. Fat guy in the kitchen back. Ray, recently read you went to IUP. I did too. Very cool. Uh, I, I did, but I did not make it to the main campus. Um, I was, when, when I... Uh, applied to college uh, IUP was the only college that accepted me and I had a choice of the Armstrong County campus which was in in um, Catanning PA and the other campus was in Punxsutawney PA now Punxsutawney is famous because that's where they they bring the groundhog from to see if we're going to have six more weeks of winter um, and I just couldn't bring myself to go to school in a town where, I don't know, there were things like Punxsutawney Phil Hotel or Motel. I just, you know, <laughs> the Groundhog Motel. I just, I, I didn't want to live in a town that that was just, you know, famous because of a groundhog. So I went to the Armstrong County campus in Catanning, Pennsylvania. And you, I was there. You, I think I made it. I think I made it two or three semesters, something like that. I certainly didn't graduate. <laughs> Tops a thoughtful contribution Thank you, from Shannon. Shannon. Thank you. Excited to see exotic car play place reference car edge depreciation data on their latest video this morning. Great show tonight. Thank you for being here, Shannon. Pops, you, yeah. I don't know if you saw this video. I saw it when Shannon shared it with us. For those of you who are unfamiliar, you go to caredge.com. Under resources, you can click on free data. Or if you want to peruse the page, you can peruse yeah. the page. Keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. And you can go to our Car Edge value ratings. This will take you. We have the old Car Edge website. We're still working on integrating all of the data. You can go to rankings, depreciation, or you can search a particular vehicle. Let's see how an Audi... <laughs> I'm not going to do an R8. We'll do a Q5. How an Audi Q5 depreciates. Yeah, like a rock. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like a rock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here is an Audi uh, Q5 depreciation schedule. So there you go. This data is what Exotic Car Play Place was referencing. And I'll drop the Audi Q5 in the chat in case you want to check that out and research some other vehicles as well. It's good information on the Car Edge website. And Pops, Indeed. we've got from Redonk, the rent, the rent. Yeah, that's what that's that that's apparently what our YouTube money goes to. It actually goes oh. to staffing, <laughs> but it could go to rent. Yeah. Rent isn't that much actually, fortunately, the the yeah. team. Um we've got dad. I'm going to show you something brand new, by the way. It's launching next week. You haven't even seen it, dad. I'm very excited to get your reaction. Okay. Mark. You're probably going to poo-poo it in certain ways though, so I'm I got a thick skin. I got thick skin. Okay, Adam good. dad. 
Adam with a yeah. contribution. Arlene at Mannheim, California has Carvana, CarMax, Hertz, Drive Time, Echo Park. All ours go for one to six thousand dollars over MMR. Hertz pays fifteen hundred over on all base trims. That's nuts. That that is that that's just that that. <sighs> How does that what work you, when fleet sales are going up? I don't get it. How does it work when fleet sales are going up? Uh, I don't get it either. And if we are in a recession, um, you know, how many people are traveling all that much to where they would need a rental car that Hertz feels so compelled to go out and overpay to have uh, lower mileage one to two year old cars that they can stick into their rental car fleet? I don't get it. Yeah, I, I really yeah. don't get it as well. All right, you ready for me to show you something brand new? Sure, because it's not me. <laughs> okay, so I already went through. I already bought this car, but we are working on it. It'll be out next week. Uh, our deal roadmap. So any yeah. vehicle that you're thinking about purchasing, we have now built a deal roadmap where you can go through the six steps to actually purchase the vehicle. And at each step, and this is free, by the way. The deal roadmap yeah. is 100% free. At each step, we're coaching you through what you need to do. So I was playing around last night because um, I finally was able to test this. The team got in a place and I, and I bought myself a nice Land Rover Range Rover Velar. I couldn't help myself. Yeah, well, and, and you really need to explain to folks because, you know, we get comments all the time. Well, what kind of cars do you guys drive? Okay, I, I drive a 2023 uh, Mini Clubman S All 4 Special Edition. Zach rides a bicycle. Okay, Zach does not have a car. He hasn't had a car in two and a half years. Um, go ahead. You're going to say something. I want to get your feedback on this, Pops. So let me show you. Yeah. You, you, when you're on a vehicle, you'll be able to go to the deal roadmap for that vehicle. I've already completed all the steps. That's the reason they're filled in. But first, you'll start with a trade-in. You'll be able to add your vehicle. Or if you've already added your vehicle to Car Edge, you'll be able to pull it in here. Or you could say, no, I don't have a trade-in. And then you can continue. Do you plan to finance the vehicle? We're going to give you some tips on if you plan to finance. If you plan to finance, we'll help you get hooked up with that credit union. If not, and you've yeah. already got a pre-approval, enter your approved rate here and your approved amount so that we can reference it later on. Or, of course, if you're going to say no, no, I'm not planning on financing. Again, just giving you one place to organize everything. everything. Then the most wow. important part, contacting the seller. Get the out-the-door price quote. We're going to give you the contact information for the dealership. And a cut down, a shortened version of what to say. Copy that. Send it to this email address. Excuse me. Call them. Go to their website. Do what you need to do to get an out the door price quote. Then yeah, add your out the door price quote. Because what we'll be able to do over the next couple of weeks here is you'll be able to add updated out the door price quotes to keep track and keep them organized and keep track of your savings as you're negotiating your deal you'll be able to do that right here and then when you Very continue cool. from that if you need insurance obviously we want to make sure that you get a sense for what a fair rate is so you can go shop for rates extended warranty they're going to hit you with it at the finance office so have a quote unfortunately we don't have those for land rovers and then dad right before you go to the dealership here is your cheat sheet here is absolutely your cheat sheet what you need to wow. bring when you're at the dealership the final steps and then obviously if you end up buying the car we want you to tell us that because Yes. So I want your feedback on the roadmap here, but you you really need to mark vehicles, you know, tell us when you've bought vehicles, because we're really going to build the first ever community driven real price data for what cars are selling for. If you think about it, there was another company that tried to do this. Their name started to so the T and ends with car. And unfortunately, they aligned with dealers and their data ah. is not so good. So we're trying. This is our first step towards this vision of every single vehicle that's for sale in the market. We should be able to tell you what another Car Edge member paid for. Like that's ultimately the goal for a similar one. So the deal roadmap pops. I'm curious. Any thoughts or feedback? Um, well, you know, I, I like it because it, it 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 gives people a better understanding of of what the steps really are and and why they might be important. And, yeah. and so, I, you know, I, I remember when I was at Acura North Scottsdale, I mean, we literally put together with pictures and a road, a, a road map to the sale. And, and we, it was laminated and we would have it on salespeople's desks and we would have little cars 
that people could put on the roadmap and it would explain what each step in the sales process was yeah. and the approximate amount of time that each step took so that people would have a better understanding as to how much time was needed to complete this journey if they chose to try and complete it that day. And it made it easier for people to understand the time needed. Um, so I, I think it's, I, I think anything that we can do that makes it easier for, for consumers to understand the process um, I'm all for. So I think that's, I think that's a great idea. And I, I think it you, will help people. What do you make of the idea of trying to get the, the sell, you know, like the full out the door price quotes and like what people actually paid and then, I, and then giving think, that information to someone else. I think that's great. It's going to have to be regionalized. Um, yeah. A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. So, but I think that's great. And, and I, and, and the other reason I think it's great is it'll provide us with the data that we can provide to other or news organizations as to what we are seeing in the real world for what average transaction prices are for a particular type of car or whatever it is, so that it, it's real, honest-to-goodness information um, yeah. that we're getting from people that are actually completing their purchases. So I think that would be, I I'm imagining a world where you're, you're on the car search and it literally shows you, you know, here's what 10 other people in your area, the most recent 10 other people in your area paid for this car. And you can just, you don't have to question if the data is right or wrong. They literally inputted it when they bought the car. Yes. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's going to take us a long time to get there, but the roadmap, is an important piece of it. And, you know, when I see that roadmap, it reminds me of, of one of the things that I used to try to teach salespeople. Huh. And, and anybody that's on the chat with us tonight or on the stream with us tonight that work in dealerships or manage dealerships, you know, everybody says, well, you know, it's, there's eight steps to the road to the sale, or it's a, it's a 10 step or 12 step process to, and, and I, I really tried to simplify it. And I tried to get my salespeople to understand that it's really a four-step process. Okay. I'm glad we just built a roadmap with six steps. Let me hear it. But, but no, no but this is, this is for salespeople. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Not, not for us, but for salespeople. And, and the steps were pretty simple. It was excitement, selection, write-up, and close. Okay, so for a salesperson, what that meant was you couldn't close a deal if you didn't write it up, if you didn't get the customer to say at some point, yes, I'd like to see the numbers. And you couldn't write it up if you didn't help the customer make a selection as to which car they wanted to buy. And you couldn't get the customer to make a selection if you couldn't get them excited about the cars that you were showing them. So yep. rather than the meet and greet, the trade appraisal, the this and that, and all those other steps, it really came down to four very simple steps, excitement, selection, right up and close. Um, so customers need to realize when they go into dealerships that many salespeople, that's how their minds work. Okay. So for the sales, yeah. so, so if you know you're dealing with a salesperson and if they can't get you excited about a car, there's going to be an issue. Um, if they can't get you to say, yeah, I'd like to see numbers because I'm thinking about maybe owning it. Um, if they can't get you to say that, that's a big issue. Um, so that's, that's how I used to, I tried to make it as, as simple as I possibly could for salespeople to just remember those four simple steps. And why and now, each one of those was was necessary. And now we're on the other side. You're on the other side, yes. and we're doing the best we can to to create a roadmap for the other piece of the puzzle. Dad, let's yes. go here. RA has another one that they want yes. us to look at. We've got it all queued up. So let me pull it up here. Bear with me for one quick second. Drum roll, please. Here we go. Okay. This is a 2020 Toyota Corolla. And again, we, we didn't mention it before, but I saw it in the chat. Toyotas, Hondas, 
pretty every used vehicle is still inflated price but if you need to buy yes. a car if you can't just be waiting for years then yeah you got to start looking at these and you got to determine what a fair market value is in today's market which is overvalued from where it would have been three years ago two years ago it's still but it is what it is yes yeah twenty eight thousand miles seven days on the market brand new let's see dad stock number ends with an a you want to explain to everyone why that's important uh, because it was a trade-in um, yep. If it ends, yes. the stock number ends with an A, it's a trade-in. So they recently can, traded this, and that's a good sign. Can I stop yeah. you for one second? Please. Will, Will's back. Okay. Just want you to know, Zach and Ray, I resubscribed. You changed my mind. Welcome back, wow. Will. <laughs> wow. One second, yeah. one second, one second. Um, how excited are we? I guess we're pretty excited, I'm right? I'm pretty excited, Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wait, too loud, too loud, too okay. loud, too loud. Sorry. Everyone's, everyone in yeah. the crowd, they're all. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's excited, Will. Thank you, Will. Thanks for coming back. Sorry yeah. about that being too loud for a second there. I always got to remember. Anyway, Dad, so this is a trade-in. Yes. They've had it for seven days, so there's not going to be price drops on it yet. No. Um. Yeah, no price drops on it, but we can see way back when... It was a twenty-one thousand dollar vehicle. I ran it over here in Black Book, so let's well, share this. Scroll back. I was going to say scroll back down again. I wanted to see something. Did it have what the original MSRP was in the pricing? Um, Keep scrolling down in price history. No, it looks like you got. Well, wait, wait, eight, eleven no. twenty-two. Yeah, twenty-one. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So when it was brand new, it was a twenty-one thousand dollar car. And today, wow. it's a nineteen thousand eight hundred dollar car. It's um, got twenty eight thousand miles on it. <laughs> but okay. let's look at what Black Book says. Let's look at what Black Book says. Car. Yeah, so depreciated six hundred bucks. And, and there you go. That's, Black those Book, are the Black Book yeah, values. Yeah, that's how crazy this stuff is. Okay, that car really, even if it's a Toyota, that car should probably be fifteen, sixteen grand. But look not at what 19. Space is saying. He's, I, he's I, right. I, it's not a bad yeah. price based on current wholesale values. Yes. But it's still way overvalued. Exactly. Exactly. The price is fair. The value is poor. Okay. Yes. The price in today's world is fair, and the value is is uh, exponentially worse. Um, and if you were to fair. buy it and finance it, and two years from now, the world returns to somewhat normal as as far as used car values are concerned. You're going to be so far upside down with negative equity. It's going to be frightening. Yeah, that's an unfortunate storyline. We'll, we've talked yes. about we'll continue to talk about. Hey, Pops, I want to remind everyone, let everyone know we are making a lot of changes, a lot of updates, trying to do our best to help over at Car Edge. Dot com. So the ways that we can help beyond yes. streams like tonight or the free community forum would be consultation calls, our car edge coach, where you're able to work with us, plus get access to all the data that we've been reviewing tonight. And we are operating on a concierge or on a wait list, excuse me, for car edge concierge. We also still have our car as car edge plus membership, too. So please go check out the different ways that we can help. I will drop this down in uh, the chat below. We still have, you know, the, the financing through our credit union partners. Dara, my sister, bought her insurance through us the other day. She bundled yes. her home and her auto and saving 600 bucks a year. I was a proud brother when that happened. Yeah. Um, if you're going to buy an extended warranty, please get a quote from us before you do. We can help you negotiate a better rate with the dealer or folks out there. So tons of resources back on the Car Edge website. And we're super proud of all that we've been able to build over the past. It's coming up on three years, Dad. Three years of doing this. Scary stuff. It really, Sc really is. Yes, yeah, scary, scary stuff. God, I yeah. was a young man when we started this. And, and I, I believe you might have been a prepubescent teen. I'm not sure. Uh <laughs> not how that works, but I'm um, close. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i'm, I'm sorry <laughs> it's all good it's all yeah. good hey yeah. well let's let's call it a show pops i'm gonna hop on my bike and ride home and before anyone gives me a hard time i got all sorts of crazy lights so i'll be very lit up we will be back on monday on the ray and zach channel won't we uh we will we'll be back on the ray and zach channel at noon Eastern nine Pacific with news that you can use from car edge. And on Monday at 1245, I will be on car edge electric unplugged with my co-host, 
justice. And um, we'll be talking. Hell, I don't know what we're talking about, uh, but we'll be talking about something that is related to. What did you think of the show yesterday? I watched on Friday. I, yeah. Oh, man. Friday. Yesterday. yesterday was Friday. Yeah. I, I thought it was a blast. You the three you with Justin and Justice was great. I yeah. really enjoyed that. Justin is so knowledgeable about about all things automotive. I mean, he he yeah, he's just incredibly knowledgeable. And and I think Justice is a great producer. Like I'm learning all sorts of things from him at watching him produce. He does a great job. So mm-hmm. yeah, I really enjoyed the show. And you, you know, you you um you played your part, Pops. So I appreciated that. I, I'm not sure what, what that part is, but whatever it is, I played it. <laughs> indeed indeed hey well everyone have a great weekend a great night and uh we'll be back on we'll be back on monday absolutely thank you everybody for being here tonight we we can't thank you enough we 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 it truly it's truly appreciated have a great rest of your saturday night and uh well i, w- I would like to tell you i hope your football team wins tomorrow but i, I don't know who the hell's playing <laughs> <laughs> see you guys all the best <laughs> bye bye everybody <laughs>